We need to talk. There's a dirty problem. It's lingering around. What is that problem? Well, it's the myopia problem, of course. Is it a problem, you might ask? Well, it's huge and you probably don't even realize it. So to begin, myopia is defined as having eyesight that's worse than minus 0.5 diopters. Here I'm going to bring up a screenshot of a document published by the WHO. It's entitled The Impact of Myopia and High Myopia. In this document, you can see here a screenshot. They detail estimations of the prevalence of myopia throughout the world. So you can see here in 2020, 33% of the world's population, which is almost 2.6 billion people, are estimated to be myopic in 2020. And projecting forward in 2050, it's expected that almost 5 billion of the world's population is going to be myopic. That's 52% of the population, which is an astronomically high number. So you might hear these numbers and say, well, so what? Who cares? Fair enough. I think this is a huge problem, though. There are obvious daily life inconveniences that come about from being myopic, such as wearing glasses every day to be able to see clearly, or contact lens wear, where you've got to, if you're a monthly user, you're washing your contacts every evening, you've got the discomfort throughout the day when they begin to dry out. I've been there, I've done that, don't like it. <laughs> and that's where why I improved my vision. But you've got other things as well, like laser eye surgery doesn't come without its risks. So all that being said, I think it's important to know what are the risks involved in being myopic. So here's a table taken from an article, the link to which I'll put below. And it's got on the left, the column is the level of your myopia. So I used to reside in the first row. I was minus two, so I would have been in that one, minus one to minus three. The second row is minus three to minus six, and the third row is minus six diopters to minus eight diopters. And then on the right-hand side of the table, we've got increased risk factors depending on the condition in question. So you have cataracts, retinal detachment, and myopic maculopathy. That's a bit of a mouthful. If you feel like Googling it, go ahead. The results are not that pleasant. Um, but as you can see, the numbers in this table are your risk factors, so if you were minus 5 myopia, for example, you'd fit into the second column, so your risk would be 3 times more for cataracts, 9 times more for retinal detachment, and almost 10 times more for myopic maculopathy. So I think you'll agree this is not a great level of risk, or something that you would, if you knew about it, perhaps you would be unwilling to bear that risk. So what can we do about all these things? Well, we can do nothing and bear the risks, as I said, or we can potentially reverse our myopia, just like I've done, like many other people are doing also. And you can learn how by joining one of my courses, links to which are in the description below. Who can improve their vision with my courses? Well, if you were somebody who could see clearly as a kid, but then at some point went to the professionals and got some glasses, and then as time went by, your prescription got worse and worse, then you're somebody who potentially could benefit from these courses. Obviously, if you have a genuine medical condition, then it is best to seek medical help from a professional such as an ophthalmologist. But the purpose of this video is just that I think it's better to make an informed decision about your vision rather than an uninformed decision about your vision. The scary numbers about how high myopia will be in 2050 can perhaps be prevented a little bit but if we look after our kids' vision. So here's a link to an article where the title says it all. Outdoor activity reduces the prevalence of myopia in children. In the article they discuss how children who spent over two hours doing outdoor activities have much lower levels of myopia and much lower prevalence of myopia compared to children who spend less time than that outdoors. This may seem obvious, but it's nice to see that the research bears that through. So that's it for today. Maybe that's some food for thought. And until the next time, see you.